Hello everyone. This is Paula Smith with MyMother'sChild.com. Today we're going to have some fun with the Pampered Pets stamp set and some other elements from the Playful Pets suite. We're going to do two different cards. They are very similar. One is what we call a simple stamping card. It is a card that doesn't involve any um, cutting or embossing and is designed more for someone who may be starting out and with their stamping hobby and don't have some of the um, other tools that we're going to use for the second card. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And this is the card that we're going to be making. This card actually came from the catalog. So I hope you'll know that even though the, you know, the catalog shows all our products, but if you will look, it gives great ideas on what to do with those products and how to put them together and just make some great projects. So this is the card that we're going to do. And um, let me, that was a little bit of a dimensional stuck on there. And then it opens this way. So the very first thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave this right here. Hopefully you can see that. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to, we have cut a piece of basic gray cardstock. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece and we cut it at four and a quarter. Now we are going to score this so that we can form our card base. That's where everything starts. So we're gonna do this. Our trimmer has a cutting blade the dark gray one, and it has a scoring blade, the light gray one. So we're gonna score this at five and a half. So we put it in here. Now, I like to always get my cutting blade out of the way because on more than one occasion, I have used my cutting blade instead of my scoring blade. So we're gonna score this. And when you do that, I hope you can see this, you can see the little line, and that's where we're gonna fold our card. And I'm gonna use my bone folder, which will give us a nice, crisp edge. I'll fold it over, make sure everything's lined up, and then I'm gonna use my bone folder to score that. So that is the first step. That is a basic step for most cards that you are making. So we have that. And then we're gonna need some Whisper White cardstock. I've, to save time, I've cut this ahead of time. So we have one five and a quarter by four inch piece that will go on the inside. We're gonna also need another piece at four inches by three and a quarter. And that is what will make up this piece right here. And then from the designer series paper, this is the front, and this is one of the little dogs we're gonna be using on the other card. But this is the front, this is one side of the paper. But on the other side, you have this very pretty red and white striped paper. So this is what we're gonna use for our background. So we cut this at um, three and a half by four and three quarters. Now you'll notice that I have the stripes running up and down. That's because I cut at three and a half with this running up and down. If I had turned it the other way, then your lines would have gone across. Totally up to you how you want it. Just be aware that there is a difference in which way the lines run depending on how you cut it. So we have that. So those are our pieces. This is our envelope, we'll get to that later. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make what is called a mask. We are gonna do a little bit of a technique today. And we're gonna use our dog stamp. We're going to use our cat stamp. And we're gonna use the one that says, I hope your day is a real treat. So I'm gonna get some blocks out. I'm gonna go ahead and get these on the blocks. The cat on. this one and we will put 
the sentiment on this one. Looks like I need to clean my blocks. I'll have to do that later. Okay, so we have our blocks all set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of, this is a post-it note. This one is a full-size post-it note. The sticky is only on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sticky note. We're going to ink up, excuse me for just a minute, let me get what I need. We're gonna ink up the puppy. And we're going to stamp the puppy on the post-it note. And I, it doesn't matter if, which way he's stamped. We're gonna stamp him like this because I wanna get as much of the sticky edge as I can. So we're gonna stamp him. Doesn't have to be a perfect image because we're gonna cut away on this. Now the next thing, we're gonna put this aside for just a minute. Now we're gonna take our white piece of paper that we want to end up looking like this, and we're gonna stamp our dog again. Now this one we do want to make sure comes out well because this will be on our actual card. So we're gonna take our dog, and I'm gonna put him a little over here toward the right-hand side. I hope you can see this. And we're gonna go down, hold it for a moment, make sure the ink is in the paper, and we're gonna lift great image. Now, we are going to take this mask that we are creating, and what we're going to do, I've done one already, but I want to show you how we do this. We're going to take our paper snips, and we're going to cut around this dog. So, we'll just go along on the edges and cut around, and we don't have to cut the whole dog out because we really just need the left-hand side of the dog. So, we're going to cut this out, and then we're gonna come around here and we're gonna cut out some more on this side. So, just to give you an idea of how you do that, here is the mask that I made before. As you can see, I cut out just along this side and a little along the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this mask and we're gonna put it, need this. We're gonna put this over the dog that we had stamped, line it up, put it down so that it stays. Now we're gonna take our cat, we're gonna ink the cat up, and we're gonna stamp over, part of it is gonna go over this mask, and we're gonna stamp this, mm, doesn't have to be exact, but about right here, stamp that. Now, you will notice part of it is on there. But when we peel this away, you will see that the cat appears to be behind the dog. Whenever you do a masking technique, whatever is masked will appear to be in the foreground, and whatever you stamp after that will be in the background. It's a really simple, easy technique that doesn't require a lot of tools. You just need to have some post-it notes around, sticky paper, and then you have that. So, and then what I'll do is I'll take my mask and I keep it. I put it in the stamp case with the stamp set. And if I wanna do that again, I don't have to recut it. It's right there ready for me. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna color this in with our watercolor pencils. The watercolor pencils that I am using are basic gray, basic black, Bermuda Bay, Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, and Real Red. And optionally, if you choose, you can also use one of our blender pens, and I will show you how to use that in just a moment. So we're gonna color this in. And just take it, you can just, you don't have to press down real hard. Just pretend you're back in kindergarten, and you can remember how relaxing that was. So we're gonna have a little fun, we're just gonna quickly Color this in. I'm gonna color the dog gray. I'm not gonna color his collar. I'm gonna color his face. I'm not gonna go over his eyes. And I'm not gonna color his nose. But I'm gonna color all the rest of him. So we're gonna color that. 
And as you can see, I didn't do it very dark. Now we're gonna take our basic black and I am gonna come back and color this in a little more dark. And I'm gonna color his nose. And I'm gonna color his eyes, lashes, brows, whatever those are. And I'm gonna color his tongue. I'm also gonna give a little bit of a shadow where his legs are. Just a little bit, not much. I'm gonna color his collar with real red. You can use whatever color you want, but I like the red. Now we're gonna do the cat. For the cat, we're gonna blend two different colors. I'm gonna start out with the Daffodil Delight, the lighter color. And we're gonna color that cat in pretty much like we did for the dog. I'm just gonna color him in, or her. Again, I'm gonna skip the eyes. I'm gonna go around those. And I just noticed when I was doing that, I need to go back with my basic gray and do a little bit of this hair that comes off this dog. I want that to have a little bit of an accent. Now, I did that in Daffodil Delight, but I've never seen a really yellow cat, so I'm gonna come back in with the pumpkin pie and I'm just gonna give it a little dimension and soften that color a little bit. So we're gonna come back over here. And wherever you see one of the artist lines, we're gonna just go over that. We're gonna just add a little bit in here lightly color over that to give it more of a golden look. M look more like the cats I've seen. We're gonna just do that very lightly. Now, you could stop right there, but if you want, what our blender pen will do is our blender pen will soften the lines. And let me find a scrap piece of paper here. Here's a scrap piece of paper. Let's see if you can see this. The blender pen, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that. If you can see that wet on there. So we're going to come back with that. And we're going to smooth out the coloring we did before with the blender pen. Very light touch. We're going to do all the gray areas first. Here we go. I'm gonna avoid the black ones for now. And it just makes it a little softer. Totally not necessary, I just like to do that. Now, I'm gonna wipe that off. You can see a little bit of the gray. When it's clear, it's ready to go on to the next color. Now I'm gonna blend in a little bit of this darker color. You can probably see how it blends a little bit better on the darker colors. Now, I want to be sure I wipe that off. You can really see that now. Wipe that off before I go on to another color. I'm going to do that on his collar. Make sure I wipe that off. Now, I'm going to do the cat. And especially on this one, using two different colors, I really like the effect that it gives when you blend them together. You don't notice it as much on the dog because it's pretty much one color. It's the gray and the black, and you don't notice it that much. But we're going to do this. So I think our kitty's looking better. And so now that's all blended. Wipe that off. Put the top back on so it doesn't dry out. If you leave the top off, it will dry out. Now what we're gonna do, because right now our dog and our cat are floating in space, so I am gonna take the Bermuda Bay and very lightly anchor them on this piece of paper. So this just gives them somewhere to sit. This I'm not gonna go back over with the um, blender pen. I like it better without. So now you can see that they are sitting and they are grounded. So the next thing that we're gonna do, 
we're gonna take our card base, the basic gray that we had earlier, and we're going to take our little hearts that are also in the Pampered Pets stamp set, and we're going to use our black ink again. And we're going to just give it a little extra feature, and we're gonna stamp these little hearts at the very top and the very bottom. I'm just gonna stamp them. They don't have to be perfect, just somewhere around there. I like to twist it and turn it just a little bit so they're not in a straight line. And we're gonna put these across the top. Now I'm gonna turn it over and go across the bottom. Now I'm trying to do it as close to the edge as I can. I don't wanna go over the edge, but we're gonna cover up the middle with our pieces. So I'm gonna to try to stay close to the edge. There we go, so now we have our hearts. While we have our ink out and we're stamping, we're gonna take our inside panel right here this is our five and a quarter by four and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp our inside um, sentiment now for this I use one that didn't came didn't came didn't come in the stamp set the one that I used on the inside because I had a, I needed a card to send to a friend I used one that said so lucky to have a friend like you and that comes from from our stamp set called heartfelt you are welcome to use whatever you have. Depends, you may want a birthday card, you may, you know, a thinking of you card, but I'm gonna use this one today. And another little trick I'm gonna show you. The stamps we've been using are called cling mount. You can see they have like a red rubber base and you mount them on the block and they have a sticker on the other side. Those are our cling mount stamps. These are what we call our photopolymer stamps. When I put this on the block, I line it, I use my grid and I line it up so that it's straight. And then I take my block and I put it on there. And when you're using a photopolymer stamp, because they don't have the cushioning that you have on the cling stamps, we wanna give it a little cushion. So I have a piercing pad. And you can use that for um, paper piercing, but I like to use it as my um, surface when I'm working with photopolymer stamps. So we're gonna take that. And then this gives us the cushion we need to get a good impression. So we're gonna put this right here. There we go. So now our inside is done. Also, while we're stamping, I always like to decorate my envelopes. I've already done this one, but where did I put that other envelope? Okay, this is what I was gonna do to the other envelope. I took my dog and I stamped it and I let it come off just a little bit. In my classes, we have a saying, no naked envelopes. Now what I'm gonna do with my stamps is I like to rub them on here to get a lot of the ink off. And then I take, I cut our stamping chamois in half and I keep it in a stamp case. And then I clean it on here. You can see that gets it nice and clean. I clean my other ones while I'm on it. The reason I, I try to get as much ink off as I can is just to keep my stamping chamois from adhering or absorbing too much excess ink but it does a great job of getting in all those little crevices because you can push it down and then the, the foam gets in there and really gets it clean. So, now all my stamps are clean. Close this up, it will stay moist. And now we are ready to start assembling. We're gonna take our card base and we're gonna put our designer series paper on the card base. Now it will cover the, the hearts a little bit, but it still gives you that appearance. I am going to use a combination. This is our snail. This has been discontinued, but I still have some left and I wanna use it up. And our new adhesive 
is called Stamp and Seal or Stamp and Seal Plus. The Plus is great when you're doing 3D projects or you need something that needs some extra stickiness. This works great. And I'll show you more about these as we go along in another video, but I'm trying to use this up because I don't want to, I don't see any reason to waste it. And I had ordered a big refill right before they switched over. So then, now we're going to line this up. You just want to center it. This does get easier the more you do it. Also, everybody messes up every once in a while. But before I really press it down, I try to make sure it's straight. Then I'm going to press that down. Then we're going to take... Um, I forgot to stamp our cinnamon on here. But I hope your day is a real treat. And for that, we're going to need real red. So I'm going to open my real red stamp pad. I'm gonna ink that up. With the photopolymer, it's really easy to get things lined up. With the cling stamp sets, a lot of times I will, to make sure it's right, I will stand up. So I'm gonna stamp this right here. There you go. Close this up. Wipe this off some. I'll clean that after a while. And now I'm going to take dimensionals, which are supposed to be right here. This is the most fun part of creating for me, is that I can't seem to stay... Um, on top of where all my supplies are. I have them all right here, and then when I go to get them, they walked off. So, we'll just get some more out, and I'll find those later when I'm cleaning up. So, these are our Stampin' Dimensionals. These are the regular size. We also have some that are mini when you need something for those little areas. There's a sheet of them, and what we do, they're two-sided adhesive. So, we're going to take some off, we're gonna take our piece and we're gonna put the dimensionals on the back. Now, I will tell you, I tend to go overboard with my dimensionals. I'm not gonna show you that today because I don't want you to think that's what you have to do. It's just a quirk for me. I just like lots of dimensionals. And I guess I am gonna do it today because I'm putting more than you probably need. And then you peel off the back of these. And then you have a it's sticking to the front because of the, the adhesive and it's gonna stick to your, and I have these little things all over my house. So now we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it at a 90 degree angle to the piece we put on before. And we're gonna try to make sure it's centered and we're going to place it down. The ribbon combo that comes with this suite. Somehow I forgot to order it. It's a really cute little black and white twine and a red ribbon. And I did not have that. So I am using something that was a retired ribbon just so I can show you how we finish it off. But I, the, the twine would make it look so much better. So I'm just gonna take some of this ribbon, make a bow. Making bows is not my strong suit, but I'm, I'm getting better. I just don't give up, I keep practicing, but it is a um, is a challenge for me. So we're gonna adjust this bow until we get it. We don't want a big bow, so we're gonna make it a little bow. And then we're gonna, when we get it the size we want, or I guess I should say when we get it the size I want. Okay, this one needs to come out a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to take a glue dot. These are our glue dots, they're not in the box. I take my glue dot, I'm gonna put it on the back of the bow right here, and then I'm going to put it on my card right here, and I'm gonna take my scissors. 
We no longer have these scissors. I got these from Stampin' Up, but they're discontinued. My tip for you, the paper snips work really well, but whatever scissors you use, only use them for ribbon. If you combine ribbon and paper, your scissors will get dull and they will not cut the ribbon cleanly. This cuts through ribbon like a knife through butter. But the paper snips will do it. I've just been using them for paper so much that they don't do well on the um, on the ribbon. Let me trim this a little bit more. So we have our ribbon. Now I'm gonna open it up and I am going to put our inside in. Another thing I will do a lot of times is I will also decorate the inside. I put the sentiment on here. But you can see on this one, I did like I did on the envelope and I stamped the little dog right there. Totally up to you if you wanna do that or not. So now we have our first card simple, quick, and we have our envelope. So now the important thing to do is send it to someone you love. Send it to someone that you're thinking about. Let it, uh, it just makes people really happy when they get something in the mail that is not either junk mail, political ads, or um, bills. So do that. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do the second one. It's very much the same, but on this one we are going to do some die cutting which makes it, um, if you don't have a cutting and embossing machine, which by the way, Stampin' Up's new one is coming out in September, and I cannot wait. It is so, it folds up, it's easy to transport, it's lighter, it's gonna be awesome. So let me clean this up a little bit. Now this is the one we're gonna make. As you can see, it's very similar to that. We're gonna start with the same base. I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter. I'm sorry, five and a half. Five and a half. Cutting blade out of the way, scoring blade in place. Move that over to the side. And fold our base. This one really has very little stamping. Here's our base. Sorry for all the noise. The other pieces that we're going to need, we're gonna need a whisper white piece for the inside, and we're gonna need another piece of whisper white to stamp on. No, we don't. We're not gonna stamp on it. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. And then you need a scrap of real red. So we have that. Um, it just needs to be at least two and three quarters by one and three quarters, but whatever scrap you have, I like to save my scraps and use them. We have our same um, red and white stripe background. Now let me show you what a full sheet of this designer series paper looks like. When you have a full sheet, you have all these cute little summer kitties, summer dogs. This is where I cut out this little cat. And then there are others with dogs and there are other ones in here, but this is where I got this. And the cool thing about it is Stampin' Up! has dies that match the designer series paper. So here's our little puppy. Here's our cat get our dies. Here's the pet's dies. They don't come like this. This is how I organize and store my dies. And if you want any information about that, I'll be happy to let you know. Just leave me a comment. So we're going to take out our puppy. Another little trick. I like to just take a magnet, any kind of magnet. Sometimes if they stick to the magnet so well that, um, <laughs> hurt my fingernails trying to get underneath it. So this works really well. And then what we're gonna do 
is I am going to cut these with the big shot. You can see this lines up with this, and this is gonna line up with this. So give me just one moment. I am gonna get my big shot, and I'll show you how we do that. Please excuse the way my plates look. As I said, we have a new cutting and embossing machine coming out, and I just, it was time to buy new ones, but I knew they weren't gonna, I was just, I was gonna get some with the new, and I didn't wanna pay for some. I'd rather spend it on stamps and spend it on more plates. We're going to, Here's our dog. I'm gonna take our dog. Let's make sure you can see this. Yeah, I think I can. Okay, so we're gonna take our dog. We're gonna line up the die around the dog. Just kind of follow his outline. I'm usually standing directly over it, so this is easier, but looking at it from the, the side angle makes it a little trickier. I just wanna make sure I get it lined up well. And then I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm gonna tape it down. Now this is removable tape, so it's not gonna hurt it when I take it off. Then we're gonna take our little cat. Here, kitty. We're gonna put this around the kitty have another piece of removable tape. Post-it tape also works great. So put that down. I'm gonna put this on top and we're gonna roll this through. Like I said, excuse the way my plates look. They don't normally look like this. Here's our cat. Oops, kitty cat fell off, landed on his feet. Here's our little cat. And now here's our little dog. So on the other card, we stamped these and colored these. If you have the embossing machine, you can just cut them out and then you don't have to color them. But you also have a stamp, so if you want to do that, you can. I'm gonna put these back on the magnet. Now we're gonna take, these are little paw prints. We're going to take our background and I am going to cut paw prints off the on this. On the other one, we stamp the hearts on the gray. On this one, I want the paw prints in this and the gray will show through. So I'm gonna do that. Now you'll have to do this multiple times because you have the one die but it's really easy and quick. I'm gonna take this up. Try another piece, I don't like the way that one's sticking. And then we're going to align it up with the top edge of the paper, because I want it close to the top. I'm gonna to do this. And I think I can get one more little paw print on here. Yeah, there's room for one more. So we're gonna do one more right here. There's one little paw print. And the rest of it will just hang off. So we did this at the top, and then we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna do it at the bottom. And you can see the little pieces just fall out. You can see them right there. And we're gonna do it again on the other end. Oops, that tore. So we're gonna put them. I don't wanna do that. Move it over. 
tape is tearing. Okay, we're going to move this over, line it up. This one and one more, and we will be done. And now our one more little paw, just to even it out. Now all of our die cutting is done. I'm move this out of the way. Put my die back before I lose it. Let me get this okay. The other technique that we're going to use on this one is heat embossing. We're going to take our red. We are going to use our Stamping Buddy, which is something that's um, Stampin' Up used to sell, and they no longer do, but you can get you can get this at um, Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And what it does, it's like a chalk, and you put it over your paper, and it keeps the embossing powder from sticking to fingerprints and the oils on your fingers. Just gives it a better surface. But mine, as you can see, is still good, so I'm just gonna keep using it. And then we're gonna take our sentiment, which is the um, one that we used, same one we used earlier, I Hope Your Day is a Real Treat. We're gonna use Versamark ink, which is a sticky, clear ink. It's also great sometimes if you just want a tone on tone look, you'll see when I stamp this. So we're gonna stamp this, we're gonna ink up our stamp. And I'm going to die cut this so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but I'm going to get it as straight as I can. So we're going to stamp down. And I don't know if you can see that, but you see how it gives you a little tone on tone look? You, it looks like a red on a red. So it's really great and it helps to make your um, stamps go farther, your inks go farther. So we're going to do that and now we're going to take our white embossing powder. We're going to take, what did I do with my sheet of paper? Sorry guys, it was right here. I'm telling you, things develop late and they just walk off. Okay. You're going to see one of my tutorials. That will also be posted on my website. But. We're going to take our white embossing powder and we're going to pour it over here. Cover that up. I'm not going to put the, oh, I just made a mess. Okay. And you can see that the powder clings to where we stamped. We will then take our heat tool, which is from Stampin' Up, like this. We're gonna plug it in. There's a source on the side. You can do one or two. We're gonna do two because we want this to melt. Now I'm gonna, um, this is gonna be a little loud. I'm gonna let it heat for just a minute. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a um, tweezers to hold it because this will get hot. Let me move this out of the way just so I can put it back. I want you to see what happens. I love heat embossing. Y'all, I have a tremor in my hand, so that's why it's shaking. If you watch, it's gonna start, it's gonna, the ink, the powder's gonna melt. You can see it starting on the bottom line. It's gonna melt, and it turns into a shiny, glossy look. And I just, every time I see it, I still think it's magic. I know the first time I saw it, I was so excited. So we're going to get this. Yeah. It's all shiny, so we know it's ready to go. I'm going to turn this noisy thing off. We're going to put this aside for just a minute. 
and I am going to show you why I did that over a sheet of paper. You can also use a um, coffee filter, but we're going to take this and we're going to put it back in here because that is still good embossing powder. So put that away, put this like this. It's not usually as big of a mess. I didn't make a mess this morning, but it's not glitter, so everything will be okay. Now, I am going to use the um, stitched rectangle dies. You can also just trim this or cut this. I just like the look that this gives, and if you already have the um, cutting and embossing machine, this is a basic. I use this so many times. It just, you get um, 13 dies, you get these, and you get the ones on the back, and I use them all the time. So we're going to center this over here. I'll use my tape again, if I can find it. Okay. Oh, that's too sticky, so that's not the... One second. Okay, so we're going to Line this up, tape it down. Now with the new one, you won't have to do this because the magnetic plate will be entirely magnetic. So when you put things on there, they will stay. The magnetic plate that we have is really great, but it consists of groups of magnets in the plate in here. And so if you put it in between a group, sometimes it'll jump. Well, it's not going to on here because I put it directly on the plate. But if you put it on here, sometimes it'll jump. So that's why I always like to tape it, just to be sure it stays in place. So we're gonna run that through. Let me show you another tip that I just forgot. When you're doing something like this that is a, um, shape that doesn't have any round edges. If you heard how much noise it made that time, if you will put it at an angle and crank it through that way, see how much quieter it is? It's much easier on the die and on your cutting machine when you do it like that. So I'm gonna put this aside. And here we go. Now, some of the pieces that were on there stuck. Okay, so now we're going to assemble our pieces. We're gonna put this on. I am going to use snail again. I am not gonna put it on the very um, left edge of here. And I'll show you why. Okay, because I'm going to put it on here and I'm gonna have it hang off about an eighth of an inch. So I don't want it on there on that side. I always have a, like to have a brush handy. I got, because I had spilled some of that powder, it's on here. So I'm just gonna brush that off. And we're gonna take our ribbon and we're going to put it around here. And pull it tight. You don't want to pull it so tight that you make the um, paper buckle, but you do want it tight. And then we're going to make a bow. Now I see the paper's buckling a little bit. It, when I tie this bow, it's gonna loosen a little bit. So I'm trying to keep it a little extra tight. Okay, so we're gonna tie our bow. My bows come up upside down, in my opinion. So I'm just gonna take this off, turn it around, put it back on, and it'll be the right way, the way I want it. So if you're better at bows than I am, you won't have to do this step. Move this over, make this bow a little bit smaller. Not quite that small. Okay. Tie it 
tighten it up, even it up. I'll put it in line where I want it, it's just a little underneath the red, the real red. I put it right there. And then you can either put a glue dot or you can put a piece of um, scotch tape on the back to hold it in place. And then that way it won't move. Again, we're gonna trim it. Pull this string down a little bit. And now we're gonna take our little dog and our little cat I really made a mess with that powder. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of snail on the front side of this cat's tail. And then I'm going to line up the dog where I want it. And then I'll just press them together. Now I'm going to put snail on both of them. Well, that snail ran out. I'm getting closer and closer to being done with the snail. It'll refill out. And then we're going to take this, and the dog is going to go on top of the ribbon. So we're going to put him like this. Straighten him up a little bit and do it. There you go. So we've got him like that. We're going to take our card base. And we're going to put our card base on here. I think I have one more refill to go. Now, when you put your adhesive on the back, do not go over your little paw prints because the adhesive will stick through and it will cause your um, card to stick to your envelope. So I just wanna be sure you don't do that. We're gonna line it up, center it. Then we're gonna take this panel, we're gonna put dimensionals on the back of it. Seriously, where are my dimensionals? Here they are. Here are the ones I was looking for earlier. I'm gonna put dimensionals on the back. I like the height that this gives. I like some um, depth to my cards. So this works really well. Take the little backings off. If you have fingernails, you can press down and that'll make one edge pop up a little bit. You can do like that. You can also use um, the take your pick tool, the pokey edge to do this, or you can just peel them off. So we're almost done. I'm gonna put this on here. And I want this edge to line up with this edge of the card. And that's why I wanted it hanging over a little bit. I'm gonna to try to line it up to be even between the two little paw print lines. And there we go. Now we need to do our inside. I'm gonna use the same sentiment that I did before. Get out my piercing pad so I'll have the correct surface. We're gonna put 
And then this time I will show you how I did the little dog. Didn't want the dog to be as dark as the sentiment. So another technique, lots of techniques in this. I didn't realize that at first. I'm gonna stamp off. So I'm gonna stamp him on here, which gets the um, some of the ink off. And then I'm going to stamp on here. This is what we would call second generation stamping. So you can see it's just a little more subtle. And we're gonna take this. And put this on the inside. And there you go. We have our envelope. And you have another card ready to send out to someone that you care about. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I apologize for having to search for everything. One of these days I am going to learn how to put things back in a certain place and know where they are the next time. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Also, if you will subscribe to my YouTube channel below, I would greatly appreciate it. The host code for August is right here, N7F6R3KM. And um, be sure to check out my website, mymotherschild.com, and to check out my Facebook page and my um, Instagram page. There are links to all of those on my website. Thank you again. I'm so glad you joined me, and I hope you enjoyed these um, cards.